good morning and welcome to Discover Life Church online here in the lobby at the Cape location. We are so glad that you guys are with us on this Easter Sunday. It's going to be a great day in church together. So excited to hear this message from Pastor Chad. And it's just going to be a great Easter Sunday. The sun is shining. Weather is perfect. It's the final round of the Masters for all you golf fans out there. But if you're here at the Cape location, hey, come on in. Grab a seat. The room is starting to get full. We're going to be sitting out in the lobby real soon, but we're glad that you're here in the building and we're glad that you're with us online. Whether you're at home, you're at work, you're in the car headed, maybe you're going to see family, maybe you're just double dipping and you want to watch online before you come in person later. We're glad that you are online with us today. You'll see a bunch of people walking back and forth. There's people all over the room. It's going to be a great day in church Ms. Lisa Lewis, our host, is with us online. If you need anything, reach out to her, ask questions, click that live prayer button. We would love to pray with you. Miss LaDonna, so good to see you online. Let's see who else we've got watching. My phone's loading. So glad to have all of you with us. As you can see, there's just tons of people walking around, but we are glad that you're with us online today. It's going to be a great day. If you need anything, jump in the chat, put in a little nickname or make a profile. We're just glad that you're with us online. All right, I'm trying to load the audience and see who's here, but I can't quite see it. But again, it's going to be a great day in church. Hey, if you have a friend that didn't go to church this Easter Sunday, reach out to him and say, hey, join me at church online. I would love to have you in church with me. Tell them live.dlc.life and they can join us right from wherever they are. But we're going to worship in just a few minutes. So I'm going to jump off here. We'll see you in the chat. Say hi. Tell us where you're watching from, and let's worship together. Once and for all, death was defeated. This is the moment. No, as a matter of fact, God is dead. I don't believe creation all around us is bowing to the creator, that new life has come, that there is hope for tomorrow. You should know this is the end. It's unbelievable to think things will get better. In the future, it will be evident. This is where the story ends. And you're wrong if you think that all of heaven declares the glory of the Father. I am sure of this, that he stayed in that grave. I would be lying if I said this was the day the entire world would breathe deep. But on that third day, Jesus came to life and was no longer in the grave, but risen victoriously. God turned this story around from death into life. This was the day the entire world would breathe deep. I would be lying if I said that he stayed in the grave. I am sure of this, that all of heaven declares the glory of the Father. And you're wrong if you think this is where the story ends. In the future, it will be evident things will get better. It's unbelievable to think this is the end. You should know that there is hope for tomorrow, that new life has come. Creation all around us is bowing to the Creator. I don't believe God is dead. No, as a matter of fact, this is the moment death was defeated once and for all. Come on, stand and sing. If Saturday was silent, and surely it was through. Since when as impossible and ever stopped you. And Friday's disappointment was Sunday's empty tomb. 
Since when as impossible and ever stopped you In Pentecostal fire and stirring something new You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon in resurrection power It runs in my veins too I believe there's another miracle Here in this room Cause my God is able to say And restore And heal And restore Anything that he wants to And just as the man who was thrown
have a living hope this morning. Thank you, Jesus. How great the chasm that lay between us and how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation. And I turned to heaven and then spoke your name and into the night. Then through the darkness and your loving kindness and tore through the shadows of my soul. And Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? And what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages and stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. Come on, sing the cross. The cross has spoken and I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful Savior and I'm yours forever. And Jesus Christ
Good morning, family. And all of you that are watching online today with us as well, welcome Easter morning here at Discover Life Church. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Gary, my wife Rose. And we'd love to meet you if we haven't gotten to already and, and just do life together with you. You know, Matthew 28 begins with the story of the Easter morning, the resurrection morning. It says that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb to finish the embalming process of Jesus. And there was a great earthquake and, a, and an angel descended from heaven and he rolled the stone away from the door and then he sat on the stone. And fear came upon the, the two Roman soldiers that were guarding it so much so, the Bible says they became as dead men. They fainted, they passed out. Tough soldiers. But it also says that the angels was like bright lightning, the, the, the appearance and, and white as snow. And then the two ladies came and immediately the angel said, I know why you're here. You, you're here to see Jesus who was crucified. You know, faith never disregards the reality of things that are happened in our lives. He was crucified, but then he said, <clears throat> but he's not here. He's risen. He, he's risen. Just like he said he would, he has risen today. You know, today, if everything may be wonderful, awesome in your life, and you're just flying above the clouds and everything's smooth and wonderful, but maybe in your life today, you're going through something or facing something, and maybe it's been a long, long time. It's been a dark, dark night in your life, and it looks like the enemy has won. It looks like the devil is stolen. He's destroyed. He's, he's taking something from you. You can't get it back. I'm sure there was a celebration in the demonic heavenlies for three, three days there, but then all of a sudden, one, one angel just comes down and rolls the stone away, and when he rolled it away, Jesus walked out of that grave. You may feel like that it's done. There's a stone in front of your life, and there's no hope, but God always has hope, and on the third day, he rose again. And in your life, God can turn it around or do something better than what you had before in your life. Keep your eyes on him. Keep coming to Jesus, even if it seems like he's in a tomb. Keep getting up and going to Jesus every day in your life. I want to pray over you. Father, thank you this morning for this great day just to come and worship you. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine outside and the beautiful life that we have together with you. I pray, Holy Spirit, this morning that you'll minister life to every person here, that already somebody has experienced you in a very real way. I pray for every barrier and every, every circumstance, every hurt, every pain to be removed in this moment in time, for people to hear a fresh word from you and for them to experience you and us to experience you in life today, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Rose? Good morning, everyone. I'd like to say happy resurrection morning happy victory morning for all of us believers for all of mankind because of what jesus has done for us i'd like to welcome all of you here today if this is your first time to be with us i just want you to know you've just chosen to come to a wonderful place of worship we are a family here at discovering life church where we experience life through Jesus Christ, and I want you to know that we are passionate about loving him and serving him and serving our community, and I just want you to know that we are delighted that you're here to worship with us today, and if you are looking for a church home, you don't have to look any further. Just stay right here with us, because if you, if you are here one time, we count you as family, amen? If you wouldn't mind, if you are new here today, take just a few minutes, fill out a Connect card that's located in a chair back. Uh, near you and or, uh, later in the service you can drop it in the offering bucket when it passes by or you can step out to our information center which is uh, the blue room on your left as you exit there will be someone there that would love to meet you and greet you and give you a gift and we just want you to know we are happy for all of our church family to be here and all of our guests can we welcome all of our guests today with a round of applause You may be seated. Once again, I welcome those people that are online with us today around the country and around the world. Thank you for joining us today. And those of you here 
uh, not counting the special, the Easter egg hunts and things. We have nine services this weekend from Friday through Sunday in our locations and uh, lots of great things happening already this weekend. So glad you're here with us. Pastor Chad's going to come and share an incredible message here in just a few moments. We're going to worship God in our giving before we transition into the word here today. Um, on Easter, <clears throat> Easter is all about the greatest gift that God ever gave. The, the, not a gift, the greatest gift, the, the greatest gift. How do I know? Because the scripture that you see somebody behind the goalpost at most NFL ball games, big sign says what? John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, that means anybody, would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. You know, without that gift, we wouldn't have everlasting life. Without that greatest gift, we wouldn't have everlasting life. Then God allows us to participate in his kingdom. He allows us to participate in what he's doing. Could he send angels down and just take care of everything? I'm, I'm sure he could, but he chooses not to. In fact, there's a scripture in the Word of God that says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How could the angels share about salvation when they haven't experienced it? So you can't give what you don't have. You can't talk about what you haven't experienced. Well, there's some people that try to do that, but in reality, in the kingdom, you can't share a Jesus that you don't know. It's like in the book of Acts when those sons of Sceva decided they wanted to imitate what Paul was doing of casting out demons. And they went to this demon-possessed guy, seven of them, and gathered around him and said, we command you to come out in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches about. In other words, we don't really know him, but Paul, Paul does this thing. We're going, the Bible says that that man empowered by that demonic, demonic spirit jumped on all seven of them whipped all seven of them. They barely escaped with their lives or clothes ripped off of them. <clears throat> they, they were trying to give something they didn't have. God allows us to participate in what he's doing on planet earth. That's why he says in Luke, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will God cause people to give into your life? Today, as we worship God in our giving, I want to thank you for your faithfulness and tithes and offerings and missions giving. All the various things that we do in this community and around the world, we don't have time to talk about it every Sunday. But you are making a major difference in people's lives. Turn to somebody and say, he's talking about you right now. Come on, right now. Let's be imitators of God in doing our best gift to him. Father, thank you this day for your love and grace. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of what you're doing, to carry your wonderful word and to love your people, to touch the hurting, the hungry, to help those who are in despair. Thank you for allowing us to share the word of life that can transform for eternity. And now, Father, as we financially, as we commit to you and we give, I thank you, Father, I thank you for your promises back into people's lives. Those that need jobs will get jobs. Those that are looking for better jobs will get better jobs. Those who have investments will grow. Businesses will have creative ideas given to you to be a blessing to the kingdom. I thank you for it, Father. Thank you for giving us the greatest gift of all, Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. Amen. God bless you as you worship the Lord in your giving on this Easter Sunday morning. Good morning, church family. We're so excited to worship with you today as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My name is Ben, and this is your family update. We can't tell you how excited we are that you chose to spend Easter Sunday with us. 
We believe that Discover Life Church exists to help people discover life through Christ. With locations in Cape Girardeau, Sykeston, and Perryville, our heart is to reach one more. Did you know that every Sunday, our 9 a.m. service is live streamed from our Cape Girardeau location? You can join us every week at live.dlc.life. You can also connect with us through our Discover Life TV program. Discover Life airs on KFBS 12 every Sunday morning, as well as the CW on Tuesday and Thursday nights. People tune in from all over the heartland and neighboring states every week, and we'd love for you to join us as well. We are a church for every generation, from newborns to senior ministry and everything in between. We have something for the entire family. To find more information about a ministry that fits you and your family, visit our website at dlc.life. Baptisms are happening at all campuses next week. At Discover Life Church, we believe that this is an outward expression of an inward decision. To sign up, head over to dlc.life slash baptisms. If you missed anything or have any questions, download our church app, head to your campus social media, or visit our website at dlc.life. Happy Easter, church family. It's so good to see you here. If you are new today, my name is Chad. My wife, Monica, and I get to serve alongside our senior pastors and alongside our staff. And we're so glad that you chose to worship here this Sunday and uh, chose to celebrate Easter. It's, uh, it's the day that our faith hinges on. If Jesus doesn't get up, where are we at? But the fact that he did get up changes everything because Easter changes everything. I remember when my family started going to church. I want to do a little time travel. I want you to go back 26 years with me. It's 1997. I'm an eight-year-old boy, and my mama got saved. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for that. It changed the trajectory of our lives. But let me tell you something. When, when my mama got saved, she got so saved. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like, not like we just started going to church a little bit, like everything changed. Like, like she got so saved. I, I, God had 10 commandments, but mama had 12. It was all of a sudden, it wasn't, we didn't just show up at church on Sunday. It was Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and prayer meetings and serve days. And I'm like, Lord, just give me a cot in the back. We live here. We are here all the time. And now, we, it, again, we couldn't, it, it changed who we hung out with. It changed what we watched. It, it changed everything about our lives. And so, so travel back. My brother and I are 15 months apart. I'm eight, nine years old. My brother's a little bit younger than me. And all of a sudden, we became those kids that baptize each other in the swimming pool in the summer because we were so churched. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Please tell me I'm not alone. <laughs> And one summer, we were, we were kids playing in the backyard. I had a cousin that was over. And again, so, so saved and so churched. We say, uh, our, our cousin says, what do you guys want to do? And we said, well, let's play Jesus. And he says, what does that mean? I said, we'll show you. <laughs> so we took two by fours from behind the shed. We built a cross. And we duct taped Eric to the cross. <laughs> We propped him up on the side of the house. We went inside and played video games. My mama said, where's Eric? And we said, he's just hanging around. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> I won't tell the kid's life that story, though, just so you don't got to worry about your children. I say that on this Easter Sunday because I think how we, in our immaturity and naivety, nonchalantly approach the cross of Calvary as little boys in the backyard, is if we're not careful, how we can approach it as adults. That the cross can become the pendulum we wear on our necklace or the sticker on the back of our car or the emblem on our shirt, but the cross is more than a symbol. And Easter is more than a holiday. <laughs> Jesus really died. Jesus really paid for our sin. And Jesus really rose again <laughs> from the dead. Aren't you thankful for that this Easter? And I want to ask you a simple question today. And if, if I want to start by asking you this question. And it's, it's so simple. 
that many of us in the room, especially if you have any, any point of church background, will naturally spout out an answer and you'll dismiss the question. However, the implications to, of our answer to this question are drastic. Some would say, and I would concur, that our answer to this question will navigate the trajectory of everything we do in our life. A.W. Tozer said that having the correct answer to this question is the greatest thing that could ever happen to us. And having the wrong answer to this question could be the most dangerous thing in our lives. So as I prepare to ask you the question, I want to challenge you in a moment not to dismiss it lightly or answer it quickly. I want you to savor it. I want you to ponder it. Critically think about your response. So here's my question today. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Now remember, I forewarned you, the question was simple, but the answer to that question is so much more than just simple. Depending on how you were raised or your exposure to church or the circumstances of your life, you will answer that question very differently. Some people in the room today would say he was a good man. Most would conclude that he did good things for people. Some would say that he's a good teacher as others, and not all, I understand that, but most in the room would recognize that he is God. You know, there are seven different times in the book of John that Jesus actually described himself. They're known as the I am statements. You can read them through John. And, and Jesus would say, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I'm the good shepherd. He would say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He would say, I'm the vine. And right in the middle of those statements in John chapter 11, Jesus would describe himself with the boldest of declarations. Jesus would say, I am the resurrection and the life. As a matter of fact, you can see this in verses 25 of John 11. If you have your Bibles, if not, we have a big one on the screen. You can read it along with us. And here's what it says in verse 25 of John 11. Jesus said to her, who is her? I'll tell you more in a moment. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Who who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Let's pray together on this Easter Sunday. Father, I pray that today you would give us ears to hear, a mind to comprehend, and a heart that's willing to change and respond. I pray, God, that you would use me in spite of myself, my fears, my failures, and all of my shortcomings. And God, may we meet with you and our lives forever be different because Easter changes everything, starting with us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church family said, amen. amen. So as I started, I say again, the church at large has turned Easter into an event. But what, what happens is we look at Jesus' resurrection like an event that happened thousands of years ago. But according to Scripture, uh, according to what the Bible says, according to what Jesus said about himself, the resurrection is not an event. The resurrection is a man. Because he said, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. Jesus is the resurrection. You may be sitting here this morning and saying, that's great. I'm glad to know it, but what does that mean for me? My goal this Easter weekend is to help us understand how the resurrection being a man and not an event applies to our lives today. I'd actually like to say this too. As we go through the day, if you find yourself more interested in who Jesus is, and if you got to some point in today's service and said, I'd like to know more about this man, you are actually starting a series of conversations with us. Today is the first day of a new sermon series that will last the next seven weeks, where every week we will dissect and preach through one of those I am statements from the book of John. And so I would encourage you to come back as you've already started the conversation with us. And so you, you, we read that he is the resurrection and he is the life, but that's one part of a really lengthy story. And so I'm going to, you might just want to keep your, your thumb in the part of, of your Bible on John 11, because I'm going to preach through most of that chapter today. And I want to start off with the first six verses about this story. And here's what it says. It says, now a certain man was sick. His name was Lazarus. He was from Bethany, the town of Mary and his sister Martha. So you see a family unit, Lazarus, Mary, Martha, brothers and sisters. This Mary that they talk about was the Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother, Lazarus, 
was sick. And so what happens is, it says, therefore the sisters sent to him, they sent to Jesus, and they said, Lord, behold, the one you love is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he made a statement. He said, this sickness is not a death, but for the glory of God, the Son of God may be glorified through it. Verse 5, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus. And then in verse 6, we see this very contradictory statement in the context of that story. He loved her, loved him, knows that they're sick, knows that they sent for him. And it says, so when he had heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. So, again, Jesus gets news that one of his best friends is sick. And it's interesting to me how Jesus responds to that, that knowledge, that news. Lazarus sick? Okay, thanks for the information. I'm going to hang out a little bit longer. You see, he was so unconcerned about Lazarus' condition that after he heard he was sick, he stayed two more days where he was, where he was at. And, you know, I, I told you again at the beginning, uh, so saved and baptizing and playing Jesus. And you know what comes along with that lifestyle? You learn a lot of Christian cliches. You learn the lingo. And one of the things that you may have heard is this. One of the Christian cliches that we say a lot is God is never late. He's always right on time. But I bet Lazarus would say, sometimes <laughs> he feels late. <laughs> sometimes our schedules don't line up. Have you ever found yourself there? That sometimes he feels late. You see, they, they sent a specific message to Jesus. Lazarus, your friend, the one you love, he's sick. Translating, we need you to come now. And Jesus stayed two more days without worry. Because often what we are terrified of is no big deal in the sight of our Savior. Lazarus is sick. It's okay. I'm not worried. I can handle whatever's going on. You see, in a lot of our worries, a lot of our fears, a lot of our doubts, a lot of our concerns, even the biggest thing that you brought with you to Easter on this Sunday are no big deal in the sight of Jesus. So you continue to read the story. We'll skip down a, a few more verses into John chapter 11, verse 20. There's actually a, an interesting conversation that I don't have time to dive into because Jesus makes travel arrangements and says, okay, we're going to go see Lazarus. And, uh, and, the, and so he gets his friends, the disciples together, and they get into an argument on which way are we going to take to Bethany? Are we going to take 55 and hit the interstate? Or are we going to go the back road to Bethany where we get a little better scenic view? And they have differing agreements on our arguments on where they're going to go. They finally come to a mutual agreement. They head to see Lazarus. And we pick up the story in verse 20. It says, now Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And you see that statement that looms in the conversation. Lord, if you had been here, it's, it's this moment between Martha and Jesus, and, 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 and she said, I, I sent for you. I needed you. There was, a, there was a lot of unsaid things in what was said. Lord, if you had been here, why didn't you, why didn't you show up? Why didn't you come through? Why, why, why the delay? Why, why, why you, what, what was the holdup, God? Why I sent for you, I needed you. And there was a lot of unsaid things in what was actually said. And for some of us today in the room, we've said those same words and we've had those same thoughts. We felt that we've cried out or we've called out or we've prayed or we've fasted or we've needed God to show up in a certain way at a certain time frame and God didn't meet our expectations and didn't fall within our parameters. And I just want to say if you feel that way today, you're not alone. You're in good company. She's staring in the face of Jesus. Her eyes are confused. Her face full of dread. Lazarus was dead. And the one man, 
who could make a difference. The one man who, who they thought would come through didn't come through the way that they thought that he would. And on top of that, he didn't even have the decency to show up for the funeral service. Or he was late. He was really late. Can you imagine the defeat in her voice as she said, if you had been here? And I wonder what some of you came to church with on this Easter Sunday feeling like it's too late for something. Can I tell you a few of my favorite things to say to people in a moment like this? That one, a waiting season is never a wasted season. <laughs> That God never wastes any season that we are in. That one of the, I like to call him Jehovah Frugal. That God doesn't waste anything at all. He doesn't waste a thing, and He won't waste this season in your life. I'd also like to remind you that if you feel like He didn't show up when you thought He would or how you thought He would, that there is no expiration date on the Word of God. And the Bible says He's not a man that He should lie. If He said He would do it, He will do it. If He begins a good work, He'll see it all the way unto completion. You see the fact that you are here today shows me that you have some sort of hope that you're holding on to. So lean in because today is for you. Let's pick up the story. The next verse, verse 23 of John 11, Jesus, he, he talks back to her and he says to her, your brother's going to rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. And I am the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And I'm, I'm just, can, I, can I talk to you the way I read the Bible sometimes? Because I read this statement, and this is the truth. Jesus made an absolutely absurd comment. Jesus made a comment that as soon as the words came out of his mouth, people thought, that's impossible. You're crazy. Never going to happen. It was such an eccentric and preposterous statement. What do you mean your brother will rise again? You see, Jesus made one of those claims that place him either on the throne as king of the universe or it indicts him as the patient of the insane asylum. Your brother will live again. But the thing is, he didn't stop there. He, he went on, he expounded, he goes on to make a statement that becomes the hinge of our Christian faith. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. I'm not just the guy who will one day be resurrected. I'm the guy who has the power to resurrect anything and everything that is dead or dying. You see, I love this about Martha, that she had enough faith to believe in Jesus that, that her brother would rise again at the last day. I, I know, I know when, you, when you come to save the world in the end, you'll take us with you. A.K., I believe that one day you'll change this. And Jesus makes a statement to her, I'm not going to do it one day. I'm going to do it today. And I'm believing for some of you in the room this Easter, Jesus wants to do something for you. Not one day, not someday, not down the road, but today. A few verses later, the other sister comes onto the scene. It says in verse 32, Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet. Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see when my mama got saved in 1997, we still had Sunday school classes with sticker charts for memory verses. And so John 11:35 was my favorite verse in all the Bible because it was the shortest one. And I, at the beginning of every Sunday school semester, I knew I was going to have one gold star for a memory verse. <laughs> Maybe if you don't know a memory verse, this is a good one for you to remember today. Two words, Jesus wept. Verse 36, then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept him from dying? I read this part of the story for context, but I also want to show you three things real quickly that are important. Jesus wept. It's, I, I say it humorously because it's an easy verse to memorize, but I'll, it's, just, it's also this staunch reminder that even though he knew he was about to change the situation, 
He feels what we feel. He cares deeply about the situations in your life, that he grieves when you grieve. He celebrates when you celebrate. He wept because he cares. And then they said, didn't this man love him when they saw him? And I think I just want to say that to some of you in the room, that Jesus loves you. He's, he's, he loves you more than you could ever imagine. He's not angry or upset or disappointed. He has grace for you today. And then they asked this question, could he not have done something? If he could open the blinded eyes, could he have not have kept this man from dying? And it's this reality that Jesus was questioned. And I just want you to know he's big enough to handle whatever questions you came in here with today. You pick it up in verse 38. It says, and, Je and then Jesus, again groaning at himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of whom was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he's been dead four days. I, again, in that, that small church I grew up in, uh, we used to read the, the King James Version of the Bible. And so I've always loved this story in the King James Version of the Bible because when it says in, in, in verse 39, Lord, by this time there's a stench, in the King James Version it said, he stinketh. And essentially, what Martha is trying to do is tell Jesus, don't do this. Don't roll the stone away. He's been in there so long, it's going to stink. This is a bad idea, Jesus. And I don't, I don't think that she's lacking faith. I don't think that she's being cynical. I think she knew how much Jesus loved Lazarus. I think she knew personally how hard it had been for her to see her brother that way. It's quite possible that she didn't want Jesus to have to endure what she had already endured. And to be frank with you, I bet she didn't want to live it all over again. And so Mary makes the most convincing argument that she can in the moment. Don't do this, Jesus. Don't roll the stone away. He stinketh. And the scriptures always brought a lot of emotion for me. Because we all have parts of our life that are stinky. We all have parts of our life that are dead. We all have parts of our life that are broken and parts of our life that are messy and parts of our life that we want to keep covered up and parts of our life that we say it's better to leave it there than to confront it or deal with it. You see, all you have to do to figure out what people do when they break things is talk to a kid who hit a baseball through his neighbor's window. What does a kid do when he hits a baseball through his neighbor's window? He hopes that they don't find out he was the culprit. <laughs> he hides it. He runs away. He throws his glove and his bat in the bottom of the toy bin in the garage. Pretends it wasn't him. You hope it. You realize. You hope that they don't realize it was you that made the mistake. You hope that somehow it goes away and someone else will be blamed for the brokenness. And you know what happens is kids grow up to become adults who still hide the smelly, broken parts of their life. And because of that, we are the most medicated, most in debt, most addicted group of people in human history. Because that's what happens when you try to hide your brokenness. It doesn't work. And I want you to hear me on this Easter Sunday. God is not repelled by what is broken inside of you. We all have things in our life that are smelly and stinky. And everything, everything in us says leave the stone, cover it up, pretend it's not there. But there's no way to heal or restore or be resurrected if you leave it hidden. It's the message of Easter. That Jesus ignores Mary. And in verse 43, he says, Lazarus, come forth. And the four-day-old stinking body of a dead man comes back to life again. And I don't know. I don't know what parts of your life are dead. I don't know what parts of your life stink. I don't know what you have safely tucked away behind the stone. But I know this. Jesus has the power to revive and resurrect every dead, stinking part of your life. So just like he said, Lazarus, come forth. What is Jesus calling you out of today? And please, if you're a follower in the room, don't dismiss that question. 
Because we all have something that the Lord wants to resurrect. We all have a part of our life that Jesus wants to bring hope to. If you're lost, is he calling you to salvation? If you're bound, is he calling you to freedom? If you're addicted, is he calling you to deliverance? If you're sick, is he calling you to healing? To, to healing? What, what is Jesus calling you out of today? So the story reads that Lazarus came out of the tomb. He lived again, and now he has a story to tell. And I would conclude that if the story stopped here, we literally have everything that we need. But we read about Lazarus again, John chapter 12. Worship team, if you'll help me close. And here's what we read in the very next chapter, the first two verses, we encounter Lazarus again, and it says this, verse 1 and 2, Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. And there they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. I'm going to be honest. I read it, and I was like, well, that was a little anticlimactic. You think of it? You just got raised from the dead. Like, you're not, not a little dead, bro. You were gone. You were it wasn't like they resuscitated you after a few minutes. It wasn't like they caught you with the ambulance and the shockers there at the house. Gone. You were wrapped up in the tomb. Funeral services had. Family done ate the fried chicken. You were gone. Done. He's not preaching. He's not on the radio or the talk shows telling his Story, I guess being dead built up an appetite because the next time we see him, he just sitting at the dinner table eating dinner. But you know what? What's intriguing about the story? I want you to imagine it with me. Jesus and his friends, Lazarus sits there next to him. And as he was sitting there eating, he didn't smell like death anymore. He didn't have grave clothes on anymore. The rigor mortis was gone and he was as limber as he had ever been. What am I trying to tell you? The dead man didn't look like he had ever been dead because when Jesus resurrects our life, he so changes us that we don't look like what we've been through. And that's what I want you to hear on this Easter Sunday, that God can so change your life. If you're watching online, that God right there, wherever you are, can so change your life. That he can so resurrect the dead, stinking parts of your life that you've hidden away, that you don't look like what you've been through. And so I've asked some friends of mine to share their story. Worship team's going to lead us in a song. In the middle of that song, you're going to see some people that call our church home, they're probably sitting around some of you this morning. And what I want you to know is they don't look like what they've been through. Let's worship the Lord together.
wasn't based on what I've done, but His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. So much power in the blood. Oh. resurrecting power of Jesus today as we close what I want to say thank you to my friends who shared their story for being vulnerable because right now hearts are being changed because of it I would encourage you in the room if you see one of those people in the video today one word is not enough to tell their whole story stop and ask them they'll tell you so much more this next day was going to seem like an 
I want hypocritical from the guy who bought a new suit for Easter. But my greatest frustration with Easter is that it's like church prom. <laughs> right? You spent more money on your wardrobe and your hair and your kids matching outfits this week than any other week in the year. And we come in put together, we come in decorated, we come in like nothing's wrong. But for some of you in the room, you're wondering, after this week and after this weekend and after these photos, and how am I going to go back to that job tomorrow? How am I going to, I'm going to tell my family what I've done. How am I going to deal with the health diagnosis? And, and it's put together, but on the other side of that suit, on the other side of that blouse, on the other side of that family photo, on the other side of that stone, it's some real messy stuff. And can I tell you that just like he's done it for me, just like he's done it for my friends, Jesus can so change your life that you don't look like what you've been through. Thursday, I, I went to jail on Thursday, voluntarily, willingly, with my friend Gene. We went into different pods in a jail and we preached. Nine, nine inmates gave their life to Jesus on Thursday. And we're, we're in the pod, we're sitting in the pod guys are all around us and in the last pod of the day so I tell I preach a little bit share some of my story and then I tell them here's what I'm going to say on Easter but I want to say it to you that John 12 Lazarus life was so changed he didn't look like what he'd been through and you don't have to spend the rest of your life looking like you're what you do right now and there was an older man sitting in front of us tears falling down his face he stumbled over his words, but eventually he got to the roundabout question, do you think that's for me too? He spent 30 years of his life. And according to him, he probably would never breathe a breath outside of those cells. And I told him one of my favorite things to tell people, God's never loved you more than he does right now. And God's never been more proud of you than he is right here in this moment. As a matter of fact, a lot of those people in that video, I've sat with them time and time again in their darkest or weakest moments as, as, as they started their journey to freedom. And I've told them the same thing. God's never loved you more than he does right now. And for some of you in the room, I want you to hear that. God's never loved you more than he does right here on this Easter Sunday. But Chad, you don't know. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've done. You don't, my word would be so much worse than some of those words. You have no clue. I know that Jesus can so change your life. That you don't look like what you've been through. So I talked with a man, led him to the Lord. And today, I feel the weight. Because the only thing that I think is scarier than life in prison is eternity in hell. And some of you, your soul's weighing in the balance. Your decision today can change from death to life. He can so change your life that you don't look like what you've been through. With every head bowed and every eye closed. What needs hope in your life again today? What is Jesus calling you out of? What dead, stinky part of your heart that you want nobody to know about is Jesus saying, let me have it. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, today it would be my great honor and privilege to lead you in a prayer and help you make the greatest decision you will ever make in your life. 17 years ago in a service like this, I made that same decision. And I gave my life to the Lord and it was broken and it was messy and there was a lot of things I had to work through and it took a process, but I'm standing here today not looking like what I've been through because of the power of Jesus and I want you to know it's not just for me, it's for you too. 
And in this moment, the only thing I'm going to ask you to do, if you're ready today to make that decision and give your life to Jesus, I'm going to count to three in just a moment. And I'm going to ask you, everybody's standing, so, so I can join my faith with your faith. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand real high so that we can take this time and we can pray together and you can make the best decision of your life. I won't embarrass you. I'll make a spectacle out of you. You don't have to come to the front. I won't come back to you. I just want to lead you to where he is today. On the count of three, if that's you in the room, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand high and we're going to pray this prayer together. One, two, three. Come on. I see that hand and that hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. I see this hand over here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, this is your moment. This is your moment. The Lord loves you. The Lord's proud of you. Thank you, Jesus. I see the hand of the risers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if I can't see your hand, that's okay. There's a lot of people in this room today, but the Lord sees you right where you are. Church family, can we do what we do every single week? Can we lead these people in a prayer of repentance and salvation? And if you raised your hand or you didn't, but you know you should have, if you're watching online in this moment and you want to pray this prayer with us, I encourage you just to say these words out loud, loud enough for yourself to hear, meet them in your heart, and everything changes today. Dear Jesus, I repent of my attitude, my actions, and my addictions. There are parts of my life that I'm not proud of. But today... I'm surrendering. I surrender the good and the bad. I give it all to you. And today, I declare that you are king and you are savior and you are Lord of my life. From this day forward, I belong to you and you belong to me. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we celebrate with all the people who just prayed that prayer for the very first time? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why do we do that? Because the Bible says when one lost person comes home, all of heaven throws a party. So I want you to know on Easter Sunday, there's a party happening in heaven right now. And it's not just because he got up, but he did get up. It's because your life just got changed forever. And we celebrate that with you. We champion that with you. And I want you to know, I want you to know, if you don't have a church home, if you're not plugged into a local body of believers, this is a place that won't just help you get started. It's a place that will help you continue the journey. Discover Life Church, we help people discover life through Christ. And we've got, we've got Bible studies and we've got life groups and we've got ministries and we've got serving opportunities. And this isn't a sales pitch. This is just me telling you, you don't have to do this thing by yourself. Right here. You can plug in with people. Those people in that video are people from this church. They're not hired actors. They're not people from somewhere else. They're people who came here and their life got changed and we've walked through it with them and we'll do the exact same thing with you. So if you prayed that prayer at the end of the service today, my wife and I, some of our staff and team, Pastor Gary and Rose, will be at the front. And we would love to shake your hand. We'd love to put a starters pack in your hand and help you get started in your journey with the Lord. It's a Bible and a booklet that our pastor wrote that just helps you get started. We'd love for you to come and do that. If you don't want to come to the front, on your way out in the blue room, all you got to do is stop by and say, hey, I'd love to have one of those starters pack. They'll put it in your hand and they'll help you get started in your journey with the Lord. One more time, can we celebrate all the people who just prayed that prayer? We commend you. We honor you. It's what Easter's all about. And before we dismiss, I want to pray for the rest of the people in the room because there's people in the room who find themselves in the same place I have in different seasons of life. I'm saved. I'm surrendered. But in my journey, I've stumbled on another part of my heart that's broken, another part of my life that's a little stinky, another part of my life that I need Jesus to help me with. And so some of you today may say, I've given my life to the Lord, but there's a part that I need I need worked on today. I just want to pray for you. Father, I pray for those in the room who've already surrendered their life to you, those watching online who are born again believers. And I thank you for that surrendering. But part of the journey is sanctification, and part of the journey is massaging out some of the stuff and 
smoothing off some of the rough edges. And today, there's people in the room who have found themselves where I found myself. I'm saved, but I still got some stuff to work on. And I pray, God, that there would be a surrendering. As you call out that part of their heart, as you call out that addiction, as you call out that struggle, as you call out that pride, as you call out that part of their life, I pray, God, that there would be a new level of surrender and say, God, here it is. And there'll be a resurrection and life brought to their families, to their journey, to their body. God, we celebrate this Easter and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Anybody get anything from the Lord today? If you gave your life to Jesus today, Next Sunday would be a great Sunday for you. Next Sunday is Baptism Sunday, and we are strategic in that because over the last several weeks, many people have given their life to Jesus. But we knew today many people in the room would give their life to Jesus. And the first step that we encourage you to take is to follow that step of commitment in water baptism. And if you want to know more about that, you can go to the Blue Room. You can go to dlc.life slash baptisms. You can sign up there. And next Sunday, bring your family Bring your friends. Tell them that you're, you've given your life to Jesus. You're going public with your faith. We'd love to celebrate that with you next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Hey, on your way out, you got the blue room for all that. You've got a photo booth. Take some time. Spend some time with your family in the lobby. We're so thankful that you're here. One more time, welcome all of our guests today. We're so thankful. So thankful that you chose to worship with us this Easter. All right. Let's pray together. Father, I pray over my family, my new family today, that you bless them and keep them. Make your face shine upon them. Turn your countenance towards them. Give them peace in everything they do and everywhere they go. And may this be a week that we don't just celebrate the resurrection, but parts of our life is resurrected and we live it out. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. Have a great week in the Lord, church family.